prisoner of the past Though I know that things don't last I'm going home But I don't know the way If I'm lucky I'll live halfway If I'm unlucky I only have today What kind of work is Last time on Kingmaker, our party of adventurers finally caught up with Nugra and they had some issues to settle with him. And to be honest with you, <laughs> they settled them pretty, pretty quickly. Nugra was at what's perhaps the most southern basement of the underground portion of this complex that once belonged to these cultists of Yogg-Sahoth, who decided to call themselves the Thresholders. A bit of a ha-ha name in the party's mind. And on the surface, it looks like that their work, what they were trying to do here, was pretty sloppy. The party, especially Andon, didn't seem too impressed with what they were trying to do. Until they got to this southern chamber, where... Upon witnessing a strange glowing symbol at the southmost region, they were suddenly attacked from out of blank icky goo came uh, two creatures that were just made of eyes and mouths. Uh, a gibbering mouth, they were called. And they actually managed to get the jump on Felix and crit him. Party fought back. And early into this fight, Nukra actually emerged from the wall. Bit of smack talk happened. But the party managed to eliminate the rogue druid quite easily. Two critical hits. Especially off the fighter and gunslinger made sure that this was a very, very bad day for Nugra. Or was it? Because upon striking Nugra down, a bit like the Great Attack from Chapter 1, he vanished, leaving nothing. Well, he completely vanished and only his clothing and only his items were left behind. Lexi knows that that was a killer shot that Isabella got in. So after Nugra's disappearance, there was a gibbering Malthus to deal with. They took care of one, and then they managed to corner the second one. They were going to take advantage of it and win this fight. The number's too great. But the Malpha crawled back onto that strange seal, where all of a sudden, a beam of radiant white light shot up, engulfed this gibbering Malpha, and completely erased it from existence. What the hells was that? And that's where we bring the game back in. Back to Candlemere we go. Now, for context, just to let everybody know, join us. Greg is not with us at the moment. He's currently have some tech issues. However, he has told us to play on without him. And he's going to try and join us ASAP. But until then, you have just eliminated the gibbering Malfas. Nugra's stuff has dropped to over here on the map and you are all reeling from that last combat. The mystical lights, the almost fey-like energy has dissipated and all that was left was the light spells that were cast upon the party. So, as I like to say, the floor is yours. What would you like to do? 
Well, Balrog has a very important uh, sense motive to conduct. It's been a few weeks since we last recorded. Give me a reminder of exactly what that sense motive was, please. When Balrog finished off Nugra, or I don't think I finished him, he got hit by the, I think a spell that finished him, but I was standing next to him after having crit him. And he was collapsed. I'm sorry, the arrow was about to hit him in the head. Um, for the bullet. Uh, he gave like a kind of almost pleased smile as he went down, like maybe that was all part of his plan for us to best him or something. And you said that Balric would later get a free sense motive to try and interpret what Nubra's look may have meant. That is entirely right. Thank you for reminding me. Go ahead. Secret roll, please. Can I have a sense motive off you, please, then, Balric? Yes, you may. That's a secret roll. Let's roll. Now, obviously, I'm totally an expert in second edition, but for folks at home that don't know, how does a sense motive rule work? Because it's not the same as first edition. It is literally an action now, and that action is performed via perception. All right. Perception. All righty, and I'm going to make this a blind GM roll. Indeed. Okay. So, I need to check Negro stat block once again. Okay. I'll actually reveal this one because this was close. Negro's perception DC was 14. So a total, well, sorry, Negro's perception was plus 14. So the DC you had to Meat or beat was 24. Mm -hmm. What does Jack roll, everybody? A 24. <laughs> All right. <laughs> right on the nozzle. Ooh. Well done. Oof. Um. Bulruk, you got the impression of that crazy old man that you had been all played like a damn fiddle. Balrog's eyes will kind of glance in the direction of where Nugra fell, and he's going to kind of grumble under his breath some kind of curse in Dwarven that for anyone who recognizes uh, who can speak Dwarven knows it's a pretty unkind curse having something to do with someone being basically a, a beardless coward. All right. What about everybody else? Kelvin... It goes, it goes something like having your beard shaved off with your own clan dagger. <laughs> oh, God. You're going home to a... You're going home to an F in barbershop. Sorry. Oh, no. It's you sold your own clan dagger to buy a razor to shave your beard off. That's how bad it is. Ooh, damn. that's the old... Oh, damn. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Okay, that's pretty nasty, actually. Okay, so... Um, Kelvin just goes off to the size here, and he goes, Yeah, if you don't mind, I'm just going to take five. And Felix is like, Uh... He's just staring at that seal, which is embedded into the ground here. What about right. it? Yeah. yeah, let's do uh, As much as I would like to start the old underground infirmary thing, I want to make sure that he ain't coming back. Looks like Bullbrook, you're uh, sorting that one. All right, Felix. That thing's not going to come back, is it? Felix is looking down at the um, seal. He says, The following. A check will be coming in. I'm just finding out the skill that Felix has to roll. Uh, yep. I think he could technically roll his Esoterica for this. 
I'll do it open. 28 for Felix, and he says... This... This seal is... Beyond me. It's beyond anything that I have ever seen. However, whatever that blast of holy light was just now, it's not going to fire again for some time. It's reset. It seems like a one and done blast. Uh, a bit like um, Isabella's gun over there will take time to reload, but Whatever this seal is, is beyond anything I have ever seen before. The only thing that I can identify for certain is that is an archaic symbol of Phorasma's religious symbol, the spiral. Well, I suppose we ought to get our little friend back down here then, eh? Isabella, how are you doing? Um, I think Isabella's uh, still like staring at the spot where Nugra disappeared. Uh, like gun loaded, sighting down the weapon, trying to figure out where he snuck off to or what happened there. Okay, so. Jack, your buffs are going to fall now. Mm -hmm. Are you checking the, what Nuga's belongings remained? Or what's been yes. left? Okay. Yeah, Borok will look through and see if anything he's still looking. You should be able to click on that then, Borok. Yes. And what you find in there is a shimmer around Nuga's filthy rags has change these items into something else. His club that he had on him, that's there and that was the same. You find a wooden and bloodstained religious symbol of Gozra on the remains, but those filthy rags actually turned out to be with a plus one armor potency already installed, a living leaf weed. Not bad. Yeah, Barak just kind of shifts through and just is kind of grumbling to grumbling to himself, like, "What were you up to, you, you old bastard?" Moments pass as silence falls. And then all of you hear footsteps coming from behind. Oh, there he is. As Granger reappears. And in their hand, they have once again that flaming sword with that radiant fire of grey twilight, almost like energy that represents one who follows the Lady of Graves. Granger looks around the wall and they see that especially into the southern wall, around where the seal is, there is outlines, black mark outlines on the wall of body shapes. Ranger looks, and then a tear falls from the Leshy's eyes. Ranger says nothing, just takes their sword sticks it into the ground, actually penetrating the stone tiles, gets down on one knee, and starts to pray to Phrasma 
in a language that none of you know. All right. Um, <clears throat> anybody find any clues as to what the hell just happened here? Well, I can tell you this much. Lugra's playing us. It was from the start. Thought in his face whenever we took him down. He was smiling right wicked he was. He did invite us here. I he suppose. Did. Looks like he wanted us to beat him. Well... I don't know if we could have avoided it, really. Leaving a unknown threat such as this on the doorstep. Agreed, but I don't think that, if anything, the threat might have gotten worse. I'll have a strange feeling this has got something to do with what happened to a talk back at the Kobold place. Mm, yeah, he pulled the same disappearing act. It's also how your spouse disappeared, and an all that time ago. You're right. It had been a while. No, yeah. Something about these lands does it to people. I saw it. A century ago. I put it out of my mind. Felix stands up and wipes the dust off his hands. So, uh, what do you suppose his end game is? What does any good villain want? Power, probably. Well, Power to do what? Be. I don't know, but you know that's got to be a game. It used to be about getting his wife back. But I don't know how well he's moved on after us saying. Well, that's how this all started in the first place. She weren't keen on uh, his methods, and they've only got worse since, so. Well, says Felix, I know you made. Um, Regrowth a communion of fellows. But can I make a recommendation in terms of what I feel we should do in regards to expansion? No time to ask, but I'm... It's because of that seal, and he points down at it. I do not think that range, Granger here should be guarding it alone. I feel that we should expand, make claim to this portion of land, and keep an eye on that seal, i.e. keep it up, because sometimes seals are to keep people out and sometimes they're to keep people in. Or something in and something out. You know what I mean. And he holds his ribs. He's like, sorry. Not exactly on form right now. Is there not a way we can just shut the darn thing for good? Break the magic spell or something? Beyond you it is. Granger speaks up. Beyond me it is. But Granger has failed. Something feeling has come back. Granger has failed. Failed in duty, failed in task. Completed one, but not the other. Failed in the other. And what was that task exactly, Granger? The seal. The lady seal. I was to make sure no one came down to potentially break it but there was something else I was to 
watch guard something else while up on the surface. Lost it, I did. I must find it. What did I you lose, Granger? Too long, too long. Thou cannot recall. Though I know it, it is connected to the seal. We the talking like a thing, like Perhaps. a creature. Right. I. Let's give Granger a. Oof. Let's give Granger a will save here. If everyone's think, yeah, here's what I propose. Let's get Granger a will save. Uh, Granger is level four. We'll add a plus four to this, so level four DC is nineteen. So, if everyone thinks this is fair, Granger to potentially recall something has got to make a DC twenty three will save. May I, may I, real quick before he does, sure, attempt to assist using a hypothesis. Oh, I like that. What do you got in mind? I don't know exactly what it's going to be, but I'm putting a few pieces together. Um, <clears throat> sorry, I got to cough a little bit to get into the voice. <laughs> um, so we got a man obsessed with bringing back his dead wife. We got strange phenomena of creatures not quite dying, right? We got a corrupted temple of Phrasma with a seal. What doesn't seem to be working, right? Okay, I'm going to roll. Hmm. Make me an assist roll then. And... Hmm. How was the best way to... Yeah, I tell you what, because you're using your wisdom, it's connected to your will. So I would say for an assist, uh, DC for the assist now and the remaster is 15. Give us a will saving throw then to assist, please, Andon. Oh, e. Just do it open. Mm -hmm. and by the way, Paizo, thank you for making the assist roll now 15. It's so much better. That's a 21. Okay, so Granger has got to make a DC 21... Uh, sorry, DC 23 will save with a plus one from that regular success. So... That should have been a crit. I had plus 13 on a DC 15. Oh. Hey, it happens, and the dice tell the story. So... With a plus one, Granger rolls a 26, which is a regular success. As they look up and they stand back up from after the prayer and they say the following. Isabella Wright. Do not know, but when she said key. Feeling a ping of a, a feeling of a reminder I believe according to my instincts key or key like object or yes it is connected to the seal I was to watch it while preventing those but I lost it Well, I... No, sir, go ahead. Maybe they don't get, I suppose. Right, so let's say Nubra needs this key, right? So he can open this seal or something. Or I can get behind something like that, but then why would he want us to kill him? Felix looks up and shrugs his shoulders. I do not know right now. Um, perhaps the answer will... Uh, be given to us in time, but well, unfortunately, we shall have to wait and see. That seal is perfectly in place, and if it is as old as Granger, 
that it is not going anywhere anytime soon. You don't think it's possible it goes to, like, a place where dead people go or something, does it? Granger shakes her head. Shakes her head. Uh, no. No, 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 no. I know connected not to the boneyard. It is not. Hmm. Uh, what is the name of the first world in the remaster? It's still the first world, isn't it? Yeah, it's still the first world. That has then, not changed. Then it seems with the rest of the Fey things going on, we can't rule out a somehow being a way through some secret part of the... But, you know, I think Felix might be right on this one. We might need a few more pieces before we put this together. How are we going to protect this place then? With them bloody scrolls up on the thing. Hmm. Well? Obviously no one has made it down past that seal yet. And it has obviously been thousands upon thousands of years since whatever happened here took place. Look at those scorch marks. They have literally been embedded into the foundation of this structure. I do not know what happened to those poor individuals, but they are literally now a part of this place. So, I do not believe there is any immediate danger. And whatever that seal is either keeping out or keeping in has obviously worked so far. I think the best thing we can do is essentially just keep an eye on it. Regardless, I feel like I think I know what we're going to have to do. And I don't like it too much. And we're going to need Felix to help big time on this one. If you're willing, of course. He it reminds me. Oh, good. Yeah. No, he just shrugs his shoulders and he says, Well, technically I work for you now, so whatever you need. Right, well, it reminds me of uh, back at Stone Farm. We had this, this tree, right, that we tried flattening and growing. And it grew for a time, and then it, it started withering and struggling. Couldn't grow anymore, that sort of thing. We tried watering it more. We tried fertilizers. We tried tree medicines. Nothing we did would help that tree until it finally gave up. We lost the tree. When we pulled it up, it turned out there had been some sort of critter that was eating the very roots of the tree poisoning the thing. Nothing we could have possibly done could have saved it because the roots were bad. Well, the way I see it, something about the roots of these lands is poisoned. Something's wrong around here. It's been wrong for as long as people have been trying to settle this place. And probably the reason that any settlement here has always failed. So the way I see it, if we're going to be settling In these lands. We need to find the oldest, darkest, strangest places and find out everything we can about what exactly is going on in these lands and what we're going to have to do to clean it up for good. Well then, for now, let's take that loot and get out of here then. You know, I think that's one of the smartest things that possibly anyone will ever say about it. Well, thank you. I said that one, actually. <laughs> Kelvin looks up. Maybe he's got what it takes to be a ruler after all. I say, you should quote your father less. You've got quite some words of wisdom in your own head. Oh, much appreciated. You're going to make me blush. You keep that up. But speaking of loot, there's some very fancy armor that Nugra had. That It's way too light for me, but I don't know. One of you others might want it. I'll actually add to that as well, Boric, because you know craftsmanship. Look, the question is obviously where the hell did Dugo get it, considering the Stag Lord, his son, was treating him the way he was for so many years. But not only that, you can tell that that weave 
is brand spanking new. Ooh. Right, and that armor does raise a point as well, because it's very, very new armor, and I have no idea what new bro would have got new armor around here. So I'm going to figure that one out, too. With a fresh, also, plus one armor potency rune on it. Mm-hmm. That could work for me. It's not bad. You want to wear could. something that new crow's wearing? Oh, yeah, I'm not too keen on that, to be honest. That's that's kind of the problem here. Oh, we can wash it. I, I think the worry here is rather more about uh, curses and such things. Uh, the inherent magical nature of the of the weave, as opposed to any, uh, you know. I don't even think it's magic. Special, perhaps, but I couldn't tell you how. Doesn't seem magic to me. <laughs> it has the magical tag. Magic's on sort of my department, so. Well, are you taking it? The, are you taking? Does it have the magic tag? It does have the magical and alchemical tags. I was I was looking on Nethys and it doesn't have magical, so that's why I said that. It could <laughs> it could be it could be the rune, probably the rune, which you can also obviously uh, check as well. Bowen kind of cocks his head to the side for a moment. Goes, come to think of it, brands make a new magical armor in the middle of the Forgotten Lands, eh? You don't think it's got anything to do with that old friend Tortuccio, does it? Uh, I'm not sure what I would know. Well, at worst case scenario, I certainly wouldn't mind having a professional pick the rune off of it and transfer it to, well, any of your armors, really. So we should take it with us, but I'm traveling a little heavy already, so... I got it. I got that, don't you worry. I'll, uh... I'll... All right. right. And we can... Somebody got a flint and tinder. Just, like, grab... Actually, I have some. I'll grab some out and I'll just, like, set the um, religious symbol on fire, because, like... Is that...? Well, I suppose you worship Gosra too. You would know. Do I? Don't you? No, I thought it was uh, one of the Dwarven Pantheon. I am mistaken in the... I thought it was Bolka. Gosra is the wind and the waves, the uh, the dual uh, gendered god. Oh, it's yeah, it's fine then. I, I don't worship. worship. Um, I mostly... Uh, Gosra, but... I mostly, uh, it's not it, evil. It, isn't that sacrilege? No, I, I absolutely don't know no, the god. I, I thought it was the evil one because he'd switched to an evil one at some point. No, Gosra's not. Gosra is. That's, that's Gos, Dave. Gos, yeah, no, Gosra is a Nephis. Alignment Nephis, depending on what day of the week it is. Yep. Gosra is the wind and the waves. It's uh, the, the god of storms and the sea. I. We, we respect Gosra. We. I think I'll. Ain't my main friend. I think I'll personally pop that in my pocket just to keep an eye on it. Kelvin's exploration action was detect magic, so I think this is a fair shout. As Kelvin says, I'm getting another magical presence in here. More powerful. Over here. In that pile of dust. Let's go have a look. I will continue my searching. Okay been a couple of weeks so let's have a seek roll just make it open anyone can have okay. a go if they wish because it's been pointed out I'll do it yeah nice oh, 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 oh. that's only a 19 unfortunately uh, a 19 that is actually 
enough. Oh, or I'm going to rule it's actually enough because of the point out. It was DC 20, but I knocked it down by two because of the point out with the tech magic because I just think that makes sense. Over here in this pile of dust, you click on that, you'll find some loot. Magic rock. Oh. oh. There's a symbol <coughs> for us. I'll pick it up and I'll turn to Granger. Now, I understand that you don't have fingers. But does this have any relevance to, you know, the folks that you knew here? Do you want to keep it, is what I'm saying. The proper joke was, does it ring any bell? Granger just shakes their head. No. You have done so much this day. A reward is owed. So please, take that ring of resisting energy. It will protect you against the powers of the void. All right. So I look at I kind of look at everybody else just for a second, like hold my finger up, just kind of like a do I just pop this on? But anybody could have it necessarily. Yeah, it's uh, gosh, rigs, like oh no. going once, going twice, soul to the druid. What? So, onto my sheet rather than the party sheet. Yes, so you now have a ring of negative energy resistance. Once invested, you'll have resistance to void energy five. Nice. So, uh, Granger, are you going to be all right in this place by yourself? Kind of worry about leaving you here again. Granger looks up and says, Well, Granger was wondering. Do you plan on watching this place then? We will we once we have the uh, the right kind of lens of established where we can keep a good eye on it, but it's going to take time for us to get that set up. Ranger trusts you. If you are going to do that, then Granger is going to leave. Granger is missing one of their duty so i shall wonder seek and reclaim it you know if you want help with that you can always come back with us i feel like our goals are kind of aligned in this so we could help each other thank you nods my body is leshy these stolen lands are no threat to me. I am and are prepared and willing to work with you, but I travel faster alone. Allow me to proceed on my duty, my sacred charge. I shall grow in strength once more. Stagnated. Stagnated, I had become staying here. When Granger is strong enough, Granger shall send regular sending spells, messages, to inform you reports of what I may find. It is better than all six of us. Uh, sorry, seven. <laughs> Hold on. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, it's six, including Granger. Right, my bad. Uh, all, it's better than all six of us wandering around aimlessly in the stolen lands where you also have your duties to attend to. Sounds reasonable to me. I suppose uh, maybe send your messages to Felix. 
He's probably the uh, most keen to handle such things. He looks at you and says, Well, um, if no one is in objection, I will happily receive Granger's messages when they are able to cast them. By all means. Felix looks at Granger. Are you sure you'll be able to regain that ability? And Granger nods. It shall not be an issue. My strength will return quickly. Right, now, how's about we all get back up to the surface and, uh, away from these creepy writings so as I can, uh, patch us all up before we head home? Alright. Laura kind of chuckles and is like, you know a place is creepy when even a dwarf wants to get back above ground? All right, so if the party are making their way back up to the surface, I'm just placing some tokens up there. And we're about to barf back up there. Here we go. Mm. So we return to the top of Candlemere Isle out of the tower. Can I, uh, as we leave, like, just sort of in the entranceway, uh, can I make a small sort of jury rig snare? Uh, not something intended to, like, have any effect, but just, like, something that would be disturbed if people were to move through to leave, so that we know if someone's come in or out. I would say that's more than reasonable. With your assurance and crafting, which I believe, if I can remember correctly, is at 60. That will be more than enough to jury rig something like that together using some of the supplies from your pack. I would say that would take an exploration downtime of around about 30 minutes. Is everyone okay with me doing that? Oh, yeah. Good idea. Yeah. I, th I think we should do a slightly more significant thing, but. Yeah, I absolutely agree that we should, like, put proper guards here, but for mm -hmm. the time being, I want to know if we miss anything while we're not here. Absolutely. Yeah, because we got to expand the kingdom to have influence here. I was thinking something like a... a lighthouse or a dock on the area. Well, Yeah, I... this is more of an yeah. interim solution. Well, yeah, <laughs> I can actually reveal, actually, uh... Getting slightly meta and dipping into the mechanics of Kingdom turns for a bit. And to be plain, even in character, I think all of your player characters could very well easily figure this out. Um, if you claim Candlemere, if you claim the Hex, then despite how dodgy this place is, on paper, it acts as a free refuge if claimed nice <coughs> that is pretty dodgy I don't know about that hey, I'm just I'll take the bonus yeah I, I'm, I'm just following the book here man because uh, yeah. you know it's uh, I can understand it a little bit because it's kind of like it is a bit of a refuge because who the absolute bleeping hell is going to come here yeah we're not going to get mugged in the candle mirror no. <laughs> Let me end in these, uh, I think Anna needs to start their own druidic circle just about the thinning candle near this point. I'm already starting one up in the... How many circles do you want? Fine. <laughs> All the circles. All the circles. Alright. In the future, see. you have Abadar Corp during the Starfinder period. Also during the Starfinder period, there's going to be Andon circles. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Just one druidic order that has survived the test of time and Galarian's disappearance. Um, okay. So, you've all returned to the surface. Uh, believe it or not, because you started out early, it's only 8.30 in the morning. So, are you patching yourselves up? Yes, please. Would you like me to make several medicine checks? 
Uh, yeah, let's actually do this mechanically and buy the book because um, you're about to head back out into the stolen lands, I would imagine. The only thing mm. I will say is you are safe enough and you have the time to use the extra hour to maximize that healing. Okay. Yep. I'm happy to do so, depending on how successful I am. <clears throat> well, first of all, before you start, because I think mechanically this would make sense, Granger will offer a free action burst heal. That works for me. All right, then. Sure. So let's do this first. Grange, uh, Granger basically turns around and says uh, they would like to only fire off one due to the fact that they're about to leave Candlemere their cells and want their spell slots for the day. So here we go. Roll healing, free actions. Ranger restores seven to everybody. Yay. I am at the level. Will of the Wisp is healed. Hmm. Sorry, the, that one. <laughs> sorry, the token is still the token is back on the board and it's actually right in between it's not there, but it's technically in between um Andon and Felix. Comes out on the ground like surprise, Mother Whispers. You really want to go again, Wisp? Round two, wisp. Uh, but, um, so, yep, um, seven points worth of burst healing from Granger, an old school channel, yes. if you will. Let's have some yes. medicine checks. Okie dokie. I do love the cleric updates. That's pretty. Let's see. I don't have assurance, do I? No. So. Uh, BB. All right. BB's fine. BB says she's fine. Uh, so I failed. <laughs> Only uh, on a 14. Oh dear. Unlucky. Uh, you're taking 10 minutes for that one? Yeah. Who's next then? <laughs> Oh, Felix is looking pretty bad. Yep. Baby's hurt, but she'll just have to bear it. Wow. It's rough. All right, that's a 16. All right. And now I need to try and remember how to do medicine checks. Surely this is automated somewhere. 2d8, isn't it? Yeah, I thought it was. I just wanted to see if there's a button to click. No. Yeah, sorry, uh... Oh, yeah, there it is. There we go. Treat wounds. Treat wounds. 2d8 on a success. Oh. It's 4d8. Oh, because it... Oh, critical success. It, I, I'll tell you... Right, here's what I'm going to do. Um... Roll another 2d8, even if it's just manually, please, Andon. Yeah. And here's what I'll say. The 2d8 will go to Felix, but that critical success of 28 will go to whoever is you're going to treat next. Uh, I would treat Balrog next, I think, going oh. by who's the most injured. All right, then. So, Balrog... Uh, takes the critical success of 18. Yeah. Much appreciated. I feel all got a bit better. Uh, last person to do is Kelvin. Yep, yep, yep. Can I target? Does that do anything? Well, sure. Give it a shot. See what happens. Other Roll, Wait, roll. something just changed on the changed on the bar. My oh, it's oh, okay. <laughs> All right, give me a moment. Give me a moment. I'm getting there. Yeah, it's all right. We've added a few new modules and toys to the foundry. Another crit. 
Another crit. 29. All right. 16 points worth of healing to Kelvin. He, lo he looks at you and says, appreciated. Uh, he's now only down by five. There is one other person I would like to treat up because it's me. Oh, of course. <laughs> This brings a whole new meaning to the phrase, treat yourself. Yep. How do you do with me? I failed. <laughs> it's a 14, I failed. Treating myself. Me and BB, we're, uh, we're, we're tough, we'll be fine. Andon's not great with that self-care. I mean, just look at that beard. Oh. Wow. Oh, whoa. Wow, wow. I can't insult dwarfs clan like that. <laughs> I'll I honor you. You thought you were pretty rubbish for that bayonet. I'm better with my knife. <laughs> hey, we now actually found out that the bayonet does actually work with runes as long as it's attached to the gun. Yep. All right, I need to turn those on. Oh, by the way, this is actually a reminder that I forgot to remember at the top. Um, we've been it's been Jack, but we've been asking recently about reactions on the first round of combat. Mm. I've got a clarification on that. It is a bit 1E-like in how it works. Unless, because it's determined by me, but unless you set up the situation, then the general rule of thumb is, no, you do not get your reaction until your first round in the initiative order. That makes sense, because it lets you mean you're acting before the person has a chance to react to the situation. So I think the way I'm generally going to rule it is thus. You will not get your reactions until your first round, your first turn in the first round. But because 2E doesn't really have any surprise, surprise mechanics, it's left down to the GM. What I will say is if you get the proverbial surprise or if you set a plan up and get the drop on your enemies, then I will generally rule you will have your reactions in that first round. Because you're set up, you're ready to go. I think that makes sense. But the general rule of thumb is no. Not until the first turn in the first round do you get your reactions. So. If everyone's all healed up and ready to move on. Granger turns and looks at you all and says. As strange as this may sound. I'll thank you for visiting Candlemere. Um, I have remembered feelings. Feelings of what it is I am supposed to do, and that is important. I shall keep in contact, and if we shall meet out there in the stolen lands as you call them then know that you will always have an ally in Granger well, you only got a you only got friends back in regroup as well you're always welcome back with us if you need anything just uh, maybe give us a heads up if you come in first you might get people otherwise all right who would like some XP rewards me, 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 me. Nah, we're good. You sure? Oh. <laughs> nah, okay, we'll take it. And in time, pretty sure. Okay, so for completing Felix's quest, you earn 30 XP. Not only that, but your kingdom also earns 30 XP. So I will adjust the kingdom sheet. For defeating Nugra, major achievement award, 80 experience points, and a hero point. Hero point? Well, I suppose you could call it a hero point. Well, yeah, it is a hero. I'm having a funny day today. It's getting warm here in the UK. Um, oh, that's why I get confused. On my overlay in the, on my OBS, what I used to record, I've uh, written up the subheading as Hero Pints. <laughs> I can write Hero Pints. Okay, so, yeah. 
<laughs> we'll have several once we get back. Uh, yeah. Right. So, uh, yeah, uh, hero point is in your pool. You're back up to three. And Felix will also turn around and look at you and say, Now, um, thank you for doing this on my behalf. Uh, so, when I get back to regrowth, I've had some of my things shipped over from Taldor. I shall present them to a couple of, uh, I have some pieces, some magical pieces. I'll give them to you as a, as a gift and as a form of payment and thanks for doing this this day. I, uh, I appreciate it. And I won't ever forget it. Thank you. Oh, we appreciate it too. I, I think we asked you to come along, in fact. So, well, you, great help. Yeah, so when, uh, when you get back to, uh, regrowth, Felix has got some sweet loot for you. So, let's go back to the Stolen Lands map. All right. As the more calming music kicks in, you are ready to set out. It's only 9 a.m. in the morning. Uh... Which way are you going? Um... Could we establish if it was quicker to, like, use our little boat? We have to get our horses back. Yeah, we oh, do. Yeah, we do. Yeah, you it could be worth it if we're willing to kind of split. It might be worth getting the boat back to regrow, because then we'd have a boat. You mean the... Oh, that's right. Yeah, it's we a make have a semi boat. I forgot. It's a makeshift boat, yes, because of the shape wood spell. The only thing I will uh, point out before you move on is before you all depart, Granger takes a piece of high ground with you all and points to this ruin off to the south. As they tell you, that is the settlement I referred to. That is the settlement that used to be here. It was an Eredin colony. I.e. They were worshippers of the last Aslanti. But, well, as you can see. It fell. Till we meet again. So. Yep. Survival checks then if you're going back to get the horses. Okay. That's me again, isn't it? It is. Survival. Yeah. Secret roll, please. Mm -mm. We're going back into forest, right? Uh, oh. This is technically not forest, despite how the map looks. This is almost marshland because you're quite close to the Nell Marshes region. To the Nile Marshes region. Okie dokie. Okay. Party disappear. And then uh, they make their way without issue back to the old Beldane's hex to reclaim the horses. May I have some exploration actions, please? Uh, I'm using the usual ray shield, just walking in the front, holding the line. Fair. If it's going to be the usual assortment, just say the usual assortment. The usual. All right, That's awesome. Usual, yeah. Awesome. Uh, the one thing that I've uh, learned recently, and if this is old news, then please forgive me, but uh, in the uh, actions tab of your player character sheets, you can actually browse the uh, exploration actions that you can use. Every time you select one of them on the character sheet, it pops up in a special section of the party character sheet under the exploration tab. You don't have to, but if you are prepared to do that for me, 
as I have your party character sheet open on the semi-regular, it will help me, uh, it helps me with a visual aid in reminding me what the downtime and the exploration actions are. I know you have a usual, but it's still kind of handy, especially if you switch it up. Uh, if you don't want to do it, no worries, no problem. I'll just personally ask as a favor. It's been helping me out a little bit. Carl Paul mentalize all the information that this game throws at me. So, have I done it right? Yes, it's actually popped. You can even see it on, uh, if you even go to the party character sheet yourself, uh, click on the exploration tab, you can even see it for yourselves. How are we adding it? I didn't quite follow where, where I'm seeing it. Okay. So we've got to drag it from the compendium onto your uh, exploration actions tab. Yes, there's also a browse button that brings up uh, a list. Exploration. Yes. Uh, there it is. Yes, there's a browse button, a bit like you've, the way you do your feats on Foundry as well. So, uh, Isabella, can I have that usual stealth check, please? Because you moor the boat up and you get the impression that something is not right. And in secret survival, or if BB sniffing things out, let's have that BB roll. Oh. Uh, with, with both. Actually, does BB, well, yeah, BB's hmm. got a character sheet, so BB gets her. I'll probably oh, actually have to change what my action is, because for me, it would actually fall into the fins, and I'd have to move at half my travel speed to do that. Yes. And all oh, I need to do something different. Yes, and all exploration actions take an average on ten min of 10 minutes, unless stated otherwise. Uh, with BB, it's either got to be you or BB, Dave, because the idea oh, is BB can take the exploration action to seek, but you have to keep commanding BB to do so. Okay, I got it. Um, so I'm, I'm survivaling again, yeah? Uh... Let's see, I've got you as search. Okay. So perception. To do a secret perception. Yeah, secret perception. Uh what are you thinking of changing up to, Balrock? Uh not sure yet. No worries. You don't have to worry about it too much for now. I'll just march along and then I'll, I'll figure something out much you know once I have a yeah, we, no we worries. don't have a scouting yet, which is always helpful. Uh Balix will do that for you if you ask him nicely. Alright. And what Kelvin is going to do is technically use repeat a spell in order to detect magic the area. I will say scouting does mean he has to move at half speed as well. Yes, it all depends if you want that speed or not. Yeah, because like I can do the defend if we're not worried about speed, but I have to move at half speed to do that. No, we, we, I think we can just chill. Yeah, oh. I, think, I think we're good for now. Okay, so you can have Go that... Go through, like, to, to our own hex. We really should be okay if we're not. Mm -hmm. Something is very wrong. Yes. So you moor up the boat. Aura gets his shield up because you get the impression that something is wrong. You make your way over to where the... Um, where the horses were moored up. And by the way, for the record, for those following at home, I've actually been getting the time and dates wrong in terms of the calendar. So for those keeping track at home, it's taken me a few episodes, some cross-referencing and some looking back on my notes, but it's actually technically uh, Serenith Night World Day. So originally it was Fire Day, so we're actually two days before what I actually thought it was, but that's on me. And so, well, day Serenif 9th is the canonical date going forward. Did someone point that out to you? In like uh, a comment? No, that was me, and my own okay. and my own hyper focus. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, like, if someone's commenting that, I'm like, damn, that's a dedicated person. My commenter would have gotten a hero point. Hero yeah, point. Pre yeah, pretty that's much, cool. pretty much. So, you approach this area where you moored up your horses. Isabella vanishes when you get the whiff that something's wrong on the air. And there is something very wrong. Your horses have gone. And I'm not talking left 
inadvertently broke their moorings and left to rejoin the wild. No. Something happened here. You take a look around. And Andon take 10 minutes along with the rest of the party. Kelvin tells you that he's not detecting any magic in this area. But there was some kind of scuffle here. And after 10 minutes, you can roughly determine that the horses were taken. Ooh. Does it seem like by, like, like a beast or something? Or, like, someone came and, like, you know, cut the ropes or untied them and stole them? Well, that will take another 10 minutes. A change in exploration action to a survival-based ability. But... You can do like, that. Yeah, I'd like to try to determine if they were like stolen or if like something like like some kind of monster came and got them or something. All right. So if everyone wants to, who is at least trained in survival, you can take another 10 minutes and give me all secret survival rolls, please. I have trackers goggles. I'm sure those are relevant here. Oh, I'm better at survival than I thought I was. Woohoo! Yeah, your survival's not bad actually, at a plus no, 10. No, not bad at all. I think we've lost Hello. Lexi from the game. I have indeed been yoked. Goodbye. Uh, I'll be right back as soon as I can. No worries. Uh, and then you switching up and going to survival mode? Yes. With the checkers goggles? Go for yeah. it. They came in handy. I knew they would. All right. So. That's when I crit fail. Oh, okay. Another 10 minutes passes. Boric, you get distracted by all the different sets of footprints that have been made from this scuffle. However, Anden, you proper Aragon, Lord of the Rings, it while trying to track down Merrin and Pippin before they bolted into Fangorn Forest. Put down the goggles and you take a look around. And let me see for certain. I'm taking the horses to Isengard. All right. Sure. Regular success, Andon. You look around and you discover that the horses were taken off to the west of you somewhere. And the footprints that have taken these horses are big, large sized creatures. Humanoid or Definitely bipedal humanoid, but uh, another check is going to uh, be needed. I would say you can either use potentially society or nature. I would love to do nature. Um, is that another secret one? That is another secret one as well, yes, please. If anyone else has society, you can give it a shot. If anything, I should have rolled with the survival, but my uh, boundary was kind of imploding. No worries. Is everything good, Isabella? Yeah, it's fixed now. All right. And then... Troll. Great. Your horses, Good. your horses were taken by trolls. Oh, I don't like that. Nope. How many do you think, Andon? I will actually reveal. Level 5 DC of 20. Andon, once again, rolled a 30. 
too good to be abandoned. For that plus 10 critical success. Wow. Make it up for all those bad weather rolls earlier. Five of them. Five oh, rolls. Five oh. rolls. Oh, man. I really don't like that. You're telling me we got a group of trolls right next to our settlement? Well, I didn't think any of you were under the impression this was an easy place to live. Not saying we want to deal with it, just that ain't gonna be the most surprising thing you see here. Right, but this is gonna have to be dealt with for sure. Can't be having trolls coming around stealing our livestock and attacking people. I, I, I'd say likely they have to be dealt with if they're stealing our horses. Yep. <clears throat> Can we take flame trolls, or maybe more? Because that may not even be all of them. Could have just been a hunting group. Uh, to be quite frank, I don't know. Well, I. Hang on. Let me try to... I have too much information, so I'm going to try and have an in-character reason to have it real quick. Go for it. No worries. Uh... Oh, fuck, I really don't. It is... It is anything it, that I can roll. It is always interesting when you've got a player theory and, you know, it's you want to bring it out into the game. But you're like... How how can I justify this character? It's, I'm, I'm not gonna lie, I actually kind of enjoy it myself. So it, it can be fun. Yeah, yeah. The trouble is, I didn't take any knowledge skills, so there's no justifiable reason for Isabella to have this information. So I just can't. Well, on the it, other hand, I think Andon might be allowed to uh, recommend. Yeah, and then you do it. <laughs> So, uh, can we take five trolls? Um, mm -hmm. Well, I suppose it depends how much fire we can bring to bear. Oh, fire? Well, if you give me a moment, where's my crafting tab gone? <laughs> oh, look, you dropped it on the ground right there. Found it. Disappeared for some reason. I think it might have been in the foundry change. Uh, yes, for anyone wondering, we uh, changed foundries due to uh, some file issues I was having with the old one. Uh, actually, I'll give this to actually Andon because you rolled so well on that nature check. It was actually a recall. It would actually be a critical success on uh, recall knowledge against trolls. Um, the average troll... Yeah, I'll explain this via the meta and you can put it into the lore. Trolls are level five. So they're, oh. ev so they're even Stevens with one of you. Hang on, that's not how challenge rating works in this game. Le level five means a, a mediocre slash easy challenge for a party of four from a creature. Hey. Yeah, it'd be rough. Hey, I'm just... Uh, it's hey, not I'm impossible, just... but it's... Just saying it's called... You're saying there's a chance. <laughs> there's a chance. Yes. Uh, no, yeah, in all serious, if Okay, if you want to do this via the encounter building system of 2E, which is fair enough. Charles are level 5, so Lexi is about right. They're about... Yeah, you could... Let's see. Let's be blunt about this. You could probably take one without an issue. Two would be a reasonable challenge. Three, things would get interesting. Four, oh dear. Five, bleep me. <laughs> and there's at least five. Yeah, we'll, uh, I'll leave it, especially until I can get my spells back. Well, on the one note, and I sort of like, uh, open one of the, like, many uh, belts of ammunition and stuff on my, uh, like, slung across my my uh, my chest piece, and there's, like, a small 
You know how when like the person in the in the, the stereotype with the person in the back alley like opens their coat and they have like a bunch of vials? Yeah. He, uh, Isabella does that and there's like five bottles of alchemist's fire lighting her pockets. Am I L- am literally I correct five bottles, in, by the way? Am I correct in terms of like Galorian and assuming that trolls are pretty aggressive and not very easy to negotiate with? They're horrific creatures. Yeah, that's what I thought. Trust no alignment anymore, but you would you would be looking at like C if memory serves. Uh, yeah, the Galarian lore is not the best. They're up there with the yogas in terms of holy bleep. But we're not wanting for fire, at least. Well, what's the plan then? Because. If we don't go after them, we'll lose our horses for sure, and they're going to be a problem in the future. But we also don't want to just go throw ourselves into an impossible fight. Balrog, our horses may be long gone. Don't you worry. When we're better prepared, I'll be able to find our way back from here. Now, because... There's nothing to it but to go back to regrowth, then. Yeah, I will say, but because of this... Your exploration speed is now down. Yep. Once again, back to one a day. Yeah. However, I don't have I don't have my expertises here, but I am very good at tracking and knowing directions. I've taken many feats for it, that sort of thing. All right, I will say, traveling by boat, you can, it's coming into the middle of the afternoon getting this far, but if you travel by boat, you could probably get back to regrowth tonight. Because you made, yeah, you you made some, the weather is fair today. You made some badass checks in regards to um, navigating with that boat. And I'm going to rule that those checks stay for now because there hasn't been a change in weather and conditions. And off my random encounter pre-game rolls, you're all right for now. I'll save some time for speed. You'll be all right getting back to regrowth. Can I leave some um, markers and things on trees uh, that are closest to the river to assist us in getting back to this exact spot if we uh, row back down oh easily I, I mean i'll tell you what if you want to do this properly you can take the remainder of the day because technically i'll say you would have two exploration actions with the speed of the boat if you want to you could take the day around the old beldane's hex and literally reconteer this hex if you want so you learn it inside and out we're not going to be too, doing too much reconteering uh, during this actual play of Kingmaker because I can see that slowing the game down severely after a certain point mm-hmm. but I would say if you want to do that as a matter of fact I'll rule it like this your combination of survival and nature checks that you've made today and I would say you would do that and it would take a couple of hours to do to mark this specific spot um I, I even have a survey map which would give me a further plus one to find this exact place yeah so i i would say it i say it take a couple of extra hours you get back into regrowth very late into the night but it is certainly doable you can certainly mark this spot thank you very much all right and for those wondering who know the kingdom turns how can they claim a spot in kingdom mode if it isn't reconteered we'll go over that no worries there i've already thought about that but all right so you mark this spot and you head back to regrowth for the remainder of the day yes please all right i'm ready to go home night falls upon the stolen lands as the party get back in the boat and they make their way back to regrowth. 
And I think that is a nice point to close today's session of Kingmaker. How'd you find that, you lot? <laughs> Trolls. Trolls. I don't I don't like that we didn't win even though we won. But <laughs> I don't know. Well how it goes with spooky evil druids, I suppose. <laughs> Darn spooky evil druids. I mean get us out of town. Look, we we might not have gotten the uh, the long term win, but I sure got the satisfaction win when we just immediately put him in the ground. Oh, oh yeah. no kidding. Yeah, just headshot him, so boom, it's there's nothing, there's nothing more satisfactory than about a headshot. So, when... He's coming back to life with a headache, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm not going to underestimate this. It's got like an eye patch. Well, we'll see what happens, because obviously that's something for the future. And we'll see what the future holds. Because, as I mentioned before, and I'll mention it here before we get out of here, some of the things in this game, in this adventure, are not going to be solved, slash, are not meant to be solved, slash, you don't have to solve it immediately. There are things that can be banked, need to be banked, will take time to develop, or you will want to bank. So, this whole thing with Nugra may be over for now, but we'll see what the future brings in that scenario. So, we're out of here for today. Thank you all very much for joining us. And when we return, let's see what's happening in your regrowth. But until next time, folks, take care of yourselves out there. Bye-bye.